With all effective resistance out of the way, the Germans turned south to push deeper into France. As Rommel's panzers rolled over the fields of the Somme Valley, he must have sensed the irony that the Germans had taken in just a few days what they had been unable to achieve in four years of war. The panzers burst out of Amiens, bypassing the Maginot Line completely and headed towards Paris. The French defenders desperately tried to stem the tide, but poor morale and tactics left them unable to cause any real delay. Where the French defences were strong, the panzers just went around them, leaving the foot-slogging infantry to finish them off. By the 11th of June, they were at the banks of the Seine. Despite having to fight house to house in the suburbs, three days later the Germans triumphantly entered Paris, which had been saved from destruction by an open city declaration. On the 16th of June, the French Premier Renault resigned to be replaced by Marshal Pétain. By the 20th of June, France's defeat was complete. At 3.30 p.m., General Hunziger met Hitler at Compe in the very railway car that the Germans had signed the armistice in World War I. Pétain agreed to all of Hitler's terms, and the armistice was signed. Hitler was beside himself with joy. Germany had control over Western Europe. Only the British remained. There is no doubt that the German defeat of France in a matter of six weeks was absolutely remarkable. And both at the time and ever since, questions have been raised as to how this could possibly have happened. The Germans had no particular superiority in numbers. They had fewer tanks than the French and British combined, and some of their tanks were of inferior quality. They did have superiority in the air, but that was not in itself decisive. They did not have superiority in numbers. They had a much better plan. Uh, the decision to attack through the Ardennes split the French army in two, uh, the less mobile forces of the Maginot Line uh, being effectively rendered ineffective for the duration of the campaign. Uh, they simply sat there very largely until ordered to surrender. And the strong French forces to the north uh, being put in an impossible position with their supply lines cut uh, of being unable to attack effectively. The Germans were now convinced that the war in the west was all but over. Hitler believed that Britain was in a hopeless position and would settle for peace. He said, the English have lost the war, but they haven't yet noticed it. On the 3rd of July, the British Navy attacked the French fleet harboured in Algeria. This was to prevent the ships from being used by the Germans. Clearly, the British intended to continue the war. On the 16th of July, Hitler issued a directive for a proposed invasion of Britain called Sea Lion. The target date was set for mid-August. However, without adequate naval support, it would be difficult. First, the Luftwaffe would have to dominate the skies. This would mean the Royal Air Force would have to be destroyed. Luftwaffe aircraft outnumbered the RAFs by two to one, but the margin between fighters was closer. 800 ME-109s faced more than 700 Spitfires and Hurricanes.
The Luftwaffe started its bombing raids on RAF bases and coastal convoys in July. Waves of bombers would take off from their bases on the French coast, supported by ME-109s. Observers on the British coast would radio the positions of the incoming aerial armadas to fighter command. Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh Dowding, head of fighter command, knew that an all-out attack on the incoming bombers would risk decimating the fighters, leaving Britain exposed. So he was cautious with his deployment of the RAF squadrons. Even in small groups, the Spitfires and Hurricanes at first could not match the battle-proven tactics of the German pilots. But as the days progressed, they learned much from the Luftwaffe, and slowly the tide turned. By the end of July, it became obvious that the Luftwaffe's strategy was not working. Goering had underestimated the abilities of the British fighters and the resolve of their pilots. Radar was also playing a major role. The newly installed radar stations on the British coast could detect the incoming formations almost as soon as they became airborne. In response, Hitler ordered a massive and continuous onslaught codenamed Adler Angriff, or Eagle Attack. The first waves of bombers were launched on the 13th of August. They managed to destroy 13 RAF aircraft in the air and 47 on the ground but the Germans lost 46 aircraft of their own. The RAF fought hard and inflicted heavy losses on the Luftwaffe over the next few days. Bad weather would delay many of the German attacks. On the 30th of August, a wave of bombers and fighters stretching as far as the eye could see was seen over Maidstone. But the RAF pilots still managed to hold on, despite a lack of experienced pilots. Many experienced pilots had been killed in the early days of the battle. The lack of a decisive victory forced Hitler to postpone Operation Sealand. Another factor would condemn the German invasion plan to history. On the 25th of August, a lone German bomber mistakenly dropped his bombs on London. Churchill ordered an immediate retaliatory strike on Berlin. This enraged Hitler, who wanted revenge. He said, we will eradicate their cities. We will put a stop to the work of these night pirates, so help us God. The result was that German bombers started attacking London. Although this was disastrous for the civilian population, it undoubtedly saved the RAF from complete destruction. On the 15th of September, a massive formation of German bombers was intercepted by over 300 Spitfires and Hurricanes. The Luftwaffe pilots were startled to see that the supposedly decimated enemy could put up such stiff resistance. 56 German aircraft were destroyed, and many German crews dumped their bombs and headed home. This was a decisive dip in what was called the Battle of Britain. Two days later, Hitler postponed his plans for sea lion indefinitely. How close the Germans actually came to success in the Battle of Britain is still extremely hard to assess, but they certainly did not give themselves the best chance. Had they continued their raids on the radar stations and the airfields of southeast England, fighter command was finding these increasingly difficult to defend against. A critical decision... Uh, after RAF Bomber Command had bombed Berlin to Hitler's absolute outrage, was his call for the Luftwaffe to switch to bombing London by daylight. Once they did that, they were coming further north. Uh, their fighters were only able to provide escorts for the bombers for a matter of minutes over London, and once the decision was made to go that far north, uh, the British forces of Fighter Command 12 Group um, based north of London, were able to come into play in a very effective manner. So that mistake by the Germans in going for London was a factor which meant it was almost impossible that they could achieve victory uh, in the Battle of Britain.